Hello, this is Wizard Wolf of WizTech Fleetworks. I have just finished a new elevator I made that I wanted to show off and I'll be uploading to the StarMade dock. This video will be showing how to assemble the pieces because it comes in the form of templates and one um, entity which will be a blueprint. And so I just wanted to give a quick tutorial on how to assemble it and a demonstration of how it works. Um, now in the past, rail-based elevators have had either buttons within the shaft itself, one for each floor or one for up and one for down, or um, like previous elevators of mine, though I've never uploaded them, there might be buttons on the elevator platform itself for each floor. Now since not too long ago there was an update that allowed you to use sensors to check the contents of display modules and you could also um, set the output of a display module using another display module and an activation block kind of like how you can toggle rails and so this new elevator design of mine takes advantage of this so you'll need to load templates now the only one that's actually required for the functional elevator is the mast one, but obviously um, you're not going to have an elevator that only goes to one floor. So you'll probably be using at least one landing and only one master. You can only have one master per elevator, though you're free to have multiple of them if you have multiple elevators. The bypass is basically just a shaft unit that does not have a door on it. There is no stop on that level. So if um, basically my templates are based off of seven by five by seven. So if you have a, a floor that for some reason is 10 blocks tall instead of just five, you could have a landing and then you could have a bypass on top of it. I'll go ahead and start putting down these so you can see what they look like. I'll start with a landing and I'll go ahead and put down a couple of those. And as you can see, um, right now they're open, but there's a door for each of these. There's a button. This display will be whatever the current floor is, and this display will show whatever the current destination for the elevator is once we have it all assembled. And so just to show what it looks like, I will load a bypass segment. And as you can see, there's no door on this one. It's just a continuation of the shaft. And then I will load one more landing. And then I will load the master. Now, technically, you're free to put the master wherever you want. However, due to how I designed this, it is easiest to assemble it if master is on top. I also have um, instructions on each of these, though they may be hard to understand, which is why I'm making this video. So, um, first thing we want to do is we want to name each level. Now, um, I made it so that you can actually have two different names for the levels. Now, first one we'll do is we'll want to name it just whatever the floor number is. And you actually have to put that in two places. The one here, because this is actually used to call the elevator, so it sends that display up. And you'll also set the number here. Now, optionally, you can set a second name. So if you want to be able to type to go to the bridge, and I should clarify this, um, in order to set a destination, you'll actually be able to type in what floor you want to go to here and then press the button. Um, so you could make it where if the very top level is on the bridge, you could set the um, optional name as bridge so that instead of typing the number, if the user doesn't remember what number floor it is, they could just type bridge. And when they submit, it'll bring them to this. So just to demonstrate this functionality, the optional name will be set as bottom here. The two um, landings in the middle will be unused, and the top one I'll name top. So we've set one, we've set bottom, we've set one. This floor will need to name two. We will not be using this, so I won't bother changing it. 
and we'll set this as two. This will be three. This will be three. This will be four. This will be four. And the optional name here will be top. Now, next step is we'll need to connect all of these buttons. It's not as big a deal as it seems. What we'll do is in order to keep the wires out of the way, all of these buttons here will be linked here, but the output needs to be here as well because it'll send whatever's in that display to this window. But since that doesn't set a wire across, we don't need to do any fancy routing. And so we'll do that for each of these. And see, those are already set since it's part of the same template. And we'll have to do it for these buttons as well because this is where you set the destination once you're in the elevator. And see, those are already set to those two, so we'll do it the same for each one below it. And next, we will, this is where it will display what options they are. This is just the default. Obviously, we can change it to be relevant. So since we have four floors on this example, I'll add a fourth floor. And I'll also add what the um, optional names are. So, you know, for this one, I'll put bottom, or it needs to be lowercase, <laughs> bottom. And this one needs to be top. And then we'll connect this. See how this is connected to the display module right here? It's facing the other way. We'll connect it to these display modules as well. And so the next one is we will need to connect this. See, this goes into this. So it sends the button presses from here over to here. And these button presses are going here too. This will need to connect to each of the sensors. See how it's already connected to these two? We will do that for the last three levels as well. And then you see how this sensor is connected to that display since that's the one it's comparing it to, as is this one. We will have to do it for these as well. Now, let's see, did I? Okay, I connected this to each of these. I should go back real quick. Since we're not using optional names on these and these, we do not need to connect these two. So I just disconnected them. Anyway, so we need to go through and connect the sensors that we're using to this. And then what we'll need to do, this is the output of the comparison. Whenever the button's pressed, if it decides that this is the level we need to go to, this button will be toggled. So we'll need to connect it to the OR gates of whatever level, or, or the relevant OR gates to each level so that it points in this direction. Now, this is already set to toggle this, which um, there's actually um, one of these. I can't remember which one. Uh, this one right here is a rail block. It's pointed sideways, so it'll stop when it reaches that. And then it toggles this button, which points these downwards so that it continues to that spot. But we also need to have it toggle each of these levels. Now, for this level, this OR gate, if it's toggled, will point all of the rails downwards. If this one's toggled, it'll point them all upwards. So for the bottommost floor, we'll just want to toggle all the down ones. Now, since this is not the bottom, on the bottom ones, we'll need to toggle the top ones, and then the ones above it will still toggle the bottom ones. 
and then see this one doesn't have one since it's a bypass since it's not a landing and then we'll point these up as well and then we'll point this one down and then from here all of them need to point upwards Next, we need to connect each of these AND blocks to this OR right here. As you can see, this AND gate is connected to that OR. What it does is whenever, whenever the platform reaches this level, it detects that it's on there. If that is the level it's supposed to stop on, then this will turn on like it currently is. And they'll turn that on, which will turn this off, which will cause the doors on the platform to, get, to open. So we need to connect each of those to that OR gate, like I just did. The AND gates. Okay. Next, what we should probably do... Um, these can be used to control the speed of the rails. Now, I personally would like to leave it at max. Now, because of how it's currently um, configured, if I were to go ahead and connect it, um, it would just do the ones that are pointed in the same direction. So what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself is I will toggle this and don't know why it left this open probably because it didn't run a check hmm oh no no it's because these are still on um, you can turn them on or off if you want to I mean at some point they'll toggle whenever the shaft first comes down but I went ahead and turned those off so now all those doors are closed and I went ahead and pressed that button so that all of these rails point downwards to this. So this will be the only one I have to individually toggle. We will select the rail speed controller. We will shift V so that it does all those and then we'll have to manually connect that last one. Next, you will need to spawn your platform, which if it's in your catalog, um, it should be listed as WTF Elevator V1 platform. I already have one spawned, so I don't need to do that. So I should probably exit build mode <laughs> so that I can go take care of this. After you spawn it, um, It'd probably be easiest to go ahead and connect the wireless before docking it. So what we shall do is see. And V. Now I'll go ahead and toggle that and they'll close the doors. This is the window that the display module and activation block will be visible through. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and open up the door on here and open up the door down here actually no I'm gonna set this to open up here that way I don't get trapped or something actually I shouldn't anyway eh. I'm trying to avoid doing stuff that I did when I first created it but I realize now I shouldn't run into that problem. All right. Um, okay, it exited me underneath the platform, so I'll need to find my door right here. Now, if it worked correctly, okay, as you can see, both of these doors are open. So, oh, I forgot to connect that. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, and so I guess you can consider this a final step. You'll need to control C on that and see how this is outputted here. You'll need to output it on each of these as well. And all this is, is that it'll show whatever the current destination of the elevator is. So um, let me go ahead and bring it down here. 
So see, it's one right now, but if it's summoned to the second floor, it'll change to two. And let me hop into gravity so I can demonstrate its usage. So hop in the elevator, you see the prompt, and so you can tell it whatever floor you want to go to. So if I want to go to the very top, I could either type four or I could type the word top. So just to show that the optional name works, I'll go ahead and type top and you press the button and it reverts back to the prompt and the elevator goes up. Now, um, I want to see if I can step out far enough to show you what the, the floor name, ah, no, dead. Okay, um, I can hop out of gravity real quick and show you that it brought you all the way to the fourth floor. I was trying to see if I could step out enough so that you could see this, but I couldn't. All right, I'll summon it back down and then show you. We can also get up there if I type the number four. And so as you can see, we are up here on the fourth floor again. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> All right, and that's the basics of the elevator. Now it should, um, it, it, I designed it to work with my other templates over here, which I do not currently have uploaded. I will probably, hopefully, upload them as one big pack when they're done. But they're being designed specifically for a ship I'm trying to do a replica of. So unfortunately, they're not the most aesthetic interiors because I'm trying to do more of an accurate reproduction. And unfortunately, the ship I'm reproducing has a somewhat monotonous interior. <laughs> Trying to keep it from being too boring though. Now, just to show that the other floors work, I can type two and we'll only go up one floor since we were on the first floor. Three. And bottom. Now, what I would have liked to have done is build the display and activation block into the elevator platform so that it would always be in here and we could change the destination mid-trip. But unfortunately, that's not possible to the best of my understanding with the current limitations of display block and wireless block technology. And so... That is it. Oh, yeah, interesting thing. Uh, if you tell it to go to bottom, quote-unquote, or top, quote-unquote, or whatever the optional name is, it'll display the optional name instead of the floor number. And that is it. That is my fancy new elevator. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this will be uploaded to the StarMade dock and available for download by the time you see this.